everyone. This is Jackie with the Santa Clara City Library. Um, if you're here for Snack Attack with Chef Laura Steck, you're in the right place. We are going to get started in a few minutes. So just hang tight. If you have, I hope you have you, I hope you were able to download the uh, recipe packet. If not, I'll go ahead and link it in the chat as well. Jackie, can you still hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, good. <laughs> I ran outside to get some props. If you want to turn your cameras on, you can. We have, it looks like we just have a small group right now. So you can. Hello.
Okay. Again, if you're just joining us, we are going to be doing uh, some snack attack preparations with Chef Laura Steck. And I'm Jackie, one of the youth services librarians here at the Central Park Library for Santa Clara City Library. Um, I put the recipe packet in the chat. So if you want to take a look at that, make sure you have everything. If you don't have the supplies with you today, that's okay. You can still follow along. Um, we are broadcasting also on YouTube, so you can rewatch the video. Um, we'll still have it up there. And you can cook along with the recording if you'd like. And I think it's what 303 now, so we can go ahead and get started. All right, so we have the amazing Laura Steck with us here today. She is a wonderful educator, chef. She has a wonderful cooking book called Cool Cuisine. And we'll go ahead and let Chef Laura take it away. Hey, Santa Clara, how is everybody? Welcome to Kitchen TV, broadcasting live from Portola Valley. Oh, hi, I've seen people wave. That's so sweet. We got some young ones with us. Glad to see, because this is really a class that's based, well, you know, everybody snacks. Um, and actually, snacking is fine, and we want to have healthy snacks where we can. Um, but, you know, one of the interesting things about snacking is I think a lot of people snack. Um, it is the largest growing sector of the food industry is snacking. And I think one of the reasons why people snack so much is because they're not actually eating full meals. So first thing is, is just make sure that you're eating meals because snacking should be something to complement, not to take the place of um, uh, a, a, a balanced meal. So that's what we want to look for. Uh, when we are thinking about snacks, we want to hopefully get snacks that are about 100 calories, they say, um, so that we don't overeat uh, when we're just trying to get a little bit of um, either nourishment or distraction from our day. Now, I have taught this class in schools for years, and so I, that one young lady who's standing there, I usually have come into your school, and I'm going to talk right to you. I think it is Trisha. Is that Trisha? Oh, she's, she's muted. Well, let me see. I'm going to check, actually, because this is a question for you. Tri oh, Tricia. Tricia. I don't know if I'm saying it right. So if I was in your school, Tricia, and I showed you this jar, which is a jar of three pounds of sugar, and I want to ask you, oh, here, we're going to get the overhead shot, three pounds of sugar that way or this way. Um, how many of these does the average American eat a year? How many of these jars? That's what we would ask. And if we had a poll, we could probably hear, or if anybody wants to unmute, does anyone want to unmute? How many jars of sugar, three pounds, does the average American eat? No guesses. So usually it starts at about five and then it goes to 10 and I say higher and it's 20 and it, whoa, somebody said a lot, 30 and then they say 40 and I say higher. And it turns out that the average American eats about 50 of these jars a year. Now where, so that's about 150 pounds of sugar, right? Where does all that sugar come from? Do I just hand you a spoon and say, here, start eating everybody? No, right? Where does this, mo the majority of the sugar, where is it hiding, you ask? It's hiding in your soda. It's hiding in your soda. This is where most of us get most of our sugar. And it really comes out to be about a jar a week, which is crazy. And if you haven't been following the science of sugar, I encourage you all to start because certainly eating so much refined sugar is not doing any of us any good. It's adding to metabolic diseases, problems with insulin resistance, uh, problems with fatty liver disease that then turn into um, you know, cancers and diabetes and heart disease. So we wanna reduce that sugar. And if you turn the video off at this moment, the one thing you should take from this class is you have to reduce 
the amount of sugar, sweet, and soda that you drink. It is the biggest intake for children. And the next biggest thing for children is having a screen in your in the bedroom. So if you want to reduce kind of or just <clears throat> do two very simple things to help uh, in, um, increase the health of your youngsters, take the screens out of their bedroom and um, cut down on the sugar, sweet and soda. So um, we've got a few uh, recipes today that are going to look at that. Um, a lot of the recipes today use natural sweeteners and some other types of sweeteners for the things that we're making there sweet, some new kinds of sweeteners. Um, we're going to do, I think it's five or six recipes. So we actually have a lot. Um, uh, if anyone is cooking, if they can raise their hand and let us know, so that will make a difference in the way I pace the class. And if not, um, remember that you can see the video afterwards. Um, the library will have it. Uh, if we do more classes, and in fact, we're doing some classes um, with the, um, the North Branch Library later in the summer, um, you can do all the dishes, some of the dishes, right? Don't be intimidated if there's just too many dishes for you to do. You can pick the dish that you'd like to work on. And um, I, we, we appreciate questions during class. So questions could be, I have an allergy to this, or I don't like that. What's a substitute for this? And then lastly, feedback is really good. So either tell the library or send me a note and let me know what you think. Now, if you're looking at the recipes, you might say, hey, pretty easy. I can make all these. And that's the point. I find that there's so many cooking classes that people attend or on, you know, certainly on television um, and then never do anything with the food. So my style is very what I say. It's simple, but eat worthy. Uh, we want to be able to put these ideas into our repertoire because cooking and health and eating well isn't about all of a sudden you just realize you know you you make it and now you're this great chef it's day-to-day -day work to work on our health to eat right and it needs constant inspiration and quite honestly someone who's put on a lot of dinner parties in my life um, what i'm really interested in now is just things that i can make quick that will satisfy me and i hope that's what uh, this class is for you so we're going to start with updated watermelon popsicles, which I've been making for years, and I just recently updated the way we sweeten them in that attempt to reduce the amount of sugar. And then other recipes we have for day, today, strawberries get the blues. I've got kimchi cukes, little gems with candied salmon and wasabi tahini, and then extra chocolate nuts and nibs, or what I'm now calling three pleasures. Uh, frozen grapes, cherries, and raisins, and an apple hummus wrap. So let's begin. Okay, I don't think anyone's cooking, so please again uh, watch the recipe or watch the video next time, or watch it online, and then you can cook along. So watermelon popsicles are a great thing for um, the season. Tis the season. Watermelons and melons are in season. Um, these are just fun, and you probably have seen them on Pinterest before. But I've been making these for kids for gosh, only knows how long. And just recently, I've kind of updid them by introducing some new sugar that really works well for a dish like this. And I encourage you to experiment and explore. So I'll take the overhead shot. I've got two new sugars for you that are um, uh, erythritol or fruit alcohol. Uh, these are the natural versions of like, um, um, saccharin, right? The, the, the artificial sugars, these are actually fermented fruit alcohols that come into what they call erythritol. And erythritol is all Swerve. Swerve is the brand name and it just looks like regular sugar. So I'm going to put some of this regular sugar, in fact, about a tablespoon into it so you can see. It's just regular sugar and it has a little bit more of a minty flavor, but it has no carbohydrates. So it's not going to give you the blood sugar spike, but it will give you the sweet. And then a, sim another, a similar, but a little different is a monk fruit blend. Monk fruit is a fruit. It is like 300 times sweeter than sugar. Again, with no um, carbohydrates, no calories. And monk fruit, as compared to swerve, is an actual food that is dried and then um, actually blended with a little bit of erythritol, um, a little bit of fruit, alcohol, sugar, that then becomes, um, again, you can see the difference between the two, a little different in color, but very similar to white sugar. The tastes are similar, 
Um, but I encourage you as you look at these uh, no carbohydrate sugars to just find ones that work for you. Um, do taste tests, determine both of them. I really find them interchangeable. And sometimes I like one better than the other, but I don't have a preference between the two. Now these sugars, um, I'm going to add to about, um, well, we say half a seedless watermelon. I've actually got, which is approximately about five cups and I've got about two and a half cups here that I'm going to add into our uh, blender, high speed blender. With about, um, if you were doing the whole recipe or about five cups, you would add a quarter cup of sugar um, or less, right? And if you are new to these kind of sugars and you're not really sure if you or your family will like them, what I encourage you to do is to any recipe that you are using with sugar, you can just reduce the amount of sugar in the recipe by half and then add standard regular sugar. So here I'm just going to add about another tablespoon or not quite. I think I've got too much sugar in here. I have found that I can really go lower on the real sugar, higher on the fake sugar. And what the real sugar does is, of course, gives you the carbohydrates and the calories, but it reminds you of the flavor that you're used to. So that um, when you are trying new things, the object is to allow yourself the opportunity to kind of get used to it. Usually humans have this problem where things that are new, we have a tendency to be afraid of. So it's also the same way with our tastes. And if we expose ourselves to new tastes in a gradual way, often we get used to it and then guess what? It's not new anymore. All right, I'm gonna put that in my high-speed blender. I'm gonna turn it on. We're gonna have some noise here. So everybody hold on. And what we get here is a beautiful, I'll take the overhead shot again, mix of just watermelon juice. Now you can move this into a strainer if you would like to move it, to remove some of the pulp. But I actually find that, and that's what the recipe says, but I actually find I really like the pulp. Um, by removing the pulp, you will get a darker red color. By leaving the pulp in, you will get a lighter red color. Um, if you do strain out the pulp, make sure you eat that pulp because boy, it's like a frothy, yummy, whatever. But in here, um, I'm just going to leave it whole and I'm going to put this into my freezer. Now, I know you can hear me even though I'm not on the camera. And so I am just going to leave that in the freezer till later in the class. Technically, we would leave it for about an, uh, two to three hours so that it starts getting kind of slushy. Um, but with the miracle of cooking classes, we can move on to, um, uh, we can fast forward that process and we'll do that as we um, move ahead. All right. The next dish we're going to make is what I call three pleasures that is also called extra chocolate nuts and nibs. Since I got the overhead shot, I'm just going to keep going here with the overhead shot. Now, if you are like me, um, you're eating more nuts because nuts by their own right are terrific snacks. We want about a handful a day, great in protein, great for fiber. Fiber feeds those microbiome in our stomach. And that's something that we want. All the undigestible fiber that we can't eat um, feeds the microbiome that live in us and on us. But I eat a lot of nuts and I often have like little bits of nuts left. And so I usually combine them all. And though this says macadamia nuts, you can look in here, you'll see there's some craisins, there's cashews, there's pistachios, because I just have little pieces of nuts left. And then also, just because I'm baked, I, I do different things, I often have just little bits of chocolate left. And then it sits around and it turns white, which isn't really what we want. In fact, because of the heat, this has already started to turn a little bit white. But no matter, I'm going to turn it into the fastest and easiest snack I have, which is microwave the chocolate. So I put the chocolate in that microwavable bowl, and I'm just going to turn it on to a minute. Uh, you can and you I'll, you can take give me the general shot now if you want. Um, the um, you can you can melt chocolate two ways. You can do it over a double boiler or a pot of boiling water with a pot on top of it, giving distance from the steam to melt the chocolate. 
or you can do it in the microwave. And quite honestly, the microwave, as long as you know your microwave, is the best option for you because it's just easier and it's more efficient. And all you need to know is approximately how your microwave will work. Because if you cook that chocolate too long, it's going to be terrible and burn. And if you've ever burnt chocolate, you know what I'm talking about. Um, any kind of chocolate will do, but if you're trying to cut down on your sugar, you know, the more cacao that you have or the higher cocoa content uh, means the lower sugar. And you can actually have almost no added sweetener in your bar of chocolate or in your chocolate cubes or um, um, little things or whatever you have your, cho however you eat your chocolate. Um, and you then can have a snack with no added sugar, right? So do what works for you. Take the chocolate that works for you. I'll take the overhead shot. And what we want out of this when we, when we actually do do this is we, we don't want all of the chocolate melted because we're going to want it to have the last bit melted in the heat of the chocolate itself. You'll see that I still have chunks of chocolate. Um, and usually I would say for me, it's about two minutes. So this is my second minute. And I may even uh, reduce that a little bit just because again, we don't wanna go too far. So with chocolate that has little sugar, this becomes the keto snack of choice because you've got protein in the, uh, in the nuts and you have, um, you know, a, a something that reminds us of sweet chocolate, but doesn't necessarily have to have any additional sweet to it. Now, I call it extra chocolate nuts and nibs because I also had a product called chocolate nibs. I also have a number of that. I'll, yeah, I got the overhead shot. Chocolate nibs is what chocolate is made out of. It has no additional sugar and they're like nuts made of chocolate. It's a great um, product. If you've never used it, it's fun to use for different things. It's very crunchy and crispy. And it, uh, we're actually going to use it for, oh, we'll be using it in the class I'm doing next as a garnish. But um, you don't have to have any of these. Um, you can also add in some dried fruit. Oop, let me, hopefully I didn't burn my chocolate. I was sitting here blabbing away. Let's look at it. Oh, good. Okay. Do I still have? All right. Well, I came pretty close. I'm going to do this because the thing is hot. I do have a few pieces left, you see, which is good. With a few extra pieces means that I will not burn my chocolate. And then what I'm going to do is just throw them in, whatever I have. I got nuts. I got nibs. You can see things. Um, I'm going to add some nibs. And I actually also have in here some craisins that I just had left over. I'm going to put this down now while I do it. Um, and, you know, one thing that I learned from a class that I recently went to with Harvard University School of Nutrition is something that Dr. Walter Willits, who was the head, now retired, of the School of Nutrition, told us is one of the best um, desserts, and that's three pleasures, chocolate, dark chocolate, nuts, and some kind of fruit. And if you, uh, they, were, they, they did a, 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 one of these, you know, chef challenges to um, create desserts with chocolate, fruit, and nuts, because those combination of those three turn out to be fantastic options for us to um, make desserts out of. Now I'm just gonna spoon this guy onto a sheet pan with some parchment paper or a silpat, a permanent parchment paper. I want to make sure that pretty much I don't have a lot of liquid left, right? I want the chocolate to, I want the nuts to fill in the space of the chocolate so that I have use up all that chocolate. And then we're going to let these, I'm just going to put these in the freezer if I have some space in the freezer, which is a good question. And we'll let these finish at the, uh, to the end of class. Do I have space? I don't know. Now, I don't have to put them in the freezer. I don't have to yell either because you guys are right there. Oh, yeah, I got space. I'm teaching a drink class next and my freezer is full of ice and everything. Um, I don't have to put them in the freezer, but I put them in the freezer because um, we'll take the uh, general shot. I, I put them in the freezer because that will help them um, 
cool down a little bit faster and I just can't wait to eat them basically. So if you just sit them on the counter, it's fine. But if you're in a rush, you can put them in the freezer or the refrigerator for I say 10 minutes and let them do their thing. All right, the next thing we're going to do is what I call strawberries get the blues. This is usually a dish that I do when I go into schools. It's a great dish and tis the season for it. It's also terrific for 4th of July, and it's a fun little dish that you can um, do quickly and make beforehand and then serve it to your 4th of July guests because now we're all gathering together again, which is so wonderful. And it starts with strawberries. We'll take the overhead shot. Um, you may want to get larger strawberries. You may want to get smaller strawberries. Uh, I can just take the top off like that. And I'd like to take the little bit of the bottom off uh, just to give it something to sit on, right? So you can pop that in your mouth. And then we'll do that again. You might take a spoon and, and dig that hole out, or you can just leave it flat. Either way works well. And then I'm gonna take something called mascarpone, which is an Italian cheese, so it's a slightly sweet. Um, this particular brand from Trader Joe's is not sweet, or it's very, it's very little in sweetness, very light in sweetness. Um, if you had cream cheese or if you had goat cheese even, which would be an interesting uh, uh, addition, um, you could just add a little bit of honey to it or even a little bit of that swerve. And I'm just gonna put some, small dab will do you on the top. And again, if I dug out the center, if I dug out the hole with a little maybe melon baller, then this would be sitting more uh, inserted in. And then just with some blueberries, we'll take blueberries. Tis the season as well, right? We're in berry season. The berry season will, the strawberries last long, but the raspberries and blueberries don't. And then we end up with these really cute little um, 4th of July fun strawberries get the blues. And again, you don't have to use mas mascarpone cheese. Um, you can use some type of a cream cheese. And if you choose to sweeten it, uh, then you can just add a little sweetener to it. What else do we have? Oh, uh, we have the apple hummus wrap. Let's do that next. So again, fast and easy are these treats, but fast and easy is really what we're looking for when we want to either have a snack. It's not about, right, um, spending all my time making snacks. And it's about things that actually will last a little bit longer and maybe we can make beforehand and then just have in the refrigerator. Um, the hummus wrap is very interesting because all it does is it combines um, uh, hummus, which we're all used to, tortillas, which many of us are eating together with that, with some vegetables. And the secret ingredient is an apple. And I think the addition of an apple to this particular um, dish is, uh, is it's, it's, it's completely unexpected and it really elevates the dish. So I've just got regular tortilla. You may use uh, a lavosh, a, more of a flatter uh, option if you choose. Um, you can use a tortilla like this, or um, you could also square it off and make it more round if you chose. And grab some hummus. Today I've got, you can tell I went to Trader Joe's. I got some dill pickle hummus. Come on now, don't go ooh. Don't go ooh. And just going to spread it on there, leaving a little bit of extra space so that I can wrap, not filling it all up. And then basically just taking my finger and giving a little bit on the ends here so that it becomes like a glue. But I don't wanna fill it all up because then it will squish out. To that, I'm gonna add some carrots or not, right? This is totally whatever you choose, whatever you wanna make whatever kind of snack you're interested in. Maybe some green onion, if you choose. And again, use whatever you would like. This is the flexible use it up snack. You might put some lettuce in. I've got some little gems here. We're gonna talk about those later because we're gonna use them for another snack. And then I'm just gonna use an apple. And of course you can take the skin out or not as you choose. And we'll just add that apple onto that. 
Now, the best thing, of course, would be to put the apple not this way, right? But this way, why would I want the apple and things facing that way? So that it rolls. If it's the opposite way, it's going to get in the way of the roll. So now I'm just going to close that baby up. And hopefully it will stay, oh, good, stay stuck. And it stays stuck again because that hummus right there serves as a glue. So I'm going to let that on my cutting board just set because the weight will also help that seal. So we'll keep going on our other snacks. And then when I get to the end of class, we will um, cut that. And hopefully it will stay together because the weight now is pressuring it down. And that's our apple hummus, um, uh, apple hummus snack. All right, apple hummus wrap. So uh, let's work on, oh, how about kimchi cukes? Let's do kimchi cukes. So uh, some of these snacks I actually have added from, I teach a keto class and the keto class, of course, is we're trying to reduce the amount of added sugar. And I have found, you know, I'm a sugar junkie. I'll be the first one to admit it. And if I am going to reduce sugar, which is actually very hard for me, um, I need um, food with flavors. So I need something that's going to distract me, right? Sugar is such a, um, a distracting thing that we eat. And um, it really, it, it takes up brain space because it, it, it goes to our brain quickly. It is, the flavor is so direct and so dramatic. And it just, um, you know, it's really a distracting food, I would say. So I need that even if I'm not eating more sugar. And um, one way that I distract myself is uh, with kimchi. Now you may say kimchi, that's nothing like sugar. And that's true. But you know, sometimes what I, I'm just used to going for sugar, because it is such a distracting food. But instead, maybe we can do things with foods that don't have it that can then give us the same kind of qualities we'd get. So this is one of my snacks that I eat if I'm doing keto or if I'm teaching keto. And all it is is kimchi and cucumbers. Uh, so I'm just going to take a Persian cucumber is what I like. I'll take the overhead shot. Um, you know, these smaller cucumbers, I think, are just more fun to eat. Um, they've got often more flavor and they've got less seeds. So uh, we'll just uh, take the cucumber. And you can cut it up in whatever kind of way you want. Um, but let's do a roll cut to learn some new cut while we can hit while we can. So um, first off, things roll, anything that rolls, you got to be careful when you're cutting something that rolls because you could easily ouch, slip and cut your finger off, right? We don't want to do that. So if you do have something that rolls, whether it be a cucumber or whatever, what I encourage you to do is to cut yourself a base. So just cut off the bottom of um, your carrot or your cucumber or your zucchini. And then now you have this stable vegetable that no longer rolls that'll protect your hands. But let's look at a, 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 new, a new kind of cut, a cut they call the roll cut just because it's fun and it's different. And it's really important. And I'll take the um, general shot for a second here. It's really important to vary not only the flavors that you bring into your life, right? Because different flavors attract our brain in different ways. And what they say is um, variation causes us to eat more. So we want to eat different kinds of flavors. But we can get variation in our diet in all kinds of ways. We can get it in flavor. We can get it in texture. And we can also get it in the way that we cut things. So it's interesting, fascinating. You may cut a cucumber the standard way, such as say, I just cut it usually like a, a circle. And if I cut it something completely different, people will eat it and appreciate it in a new and different way. So differing the cuts that you do, especially in something like a snack, is um, another way to kind of entertain your brain. And often we eat not because we're hungry, but because we're bored and we want some entertainment. So little simple changes can make um, a big difference in how you're eating. So let's talk about a roll cut and I'll take the overhead shot, please. 
So again, this is rolls, and this time I'm not going to cut a base off to it because I want to enjoy that round shape, but I want to skew it a little bit into something I would call a roll cut. And you can do this with carrot and cucumber, but basically I'm going to take my knife down into about the center of this cucumber, and I'm just going to give myself a dice. And then I'm going to turn that cucumber a quarter of a turn and give myself another dice so that I end up with this kind of unique shape. And then I'll turn the cucumber again, a quarter turn, again, a quarter turn. And I just keep doing that until I get to the end of my vegetable. And what I end up with, of course, is just some really fun shapes. And don't knock me. You'd be surprised to see something like this. So I want you to all close your eyes and think about uh, a bowl of round cucumbers just round, round circles. And now I want you to open up your eyes and look at this. Now, your brain responds to something like this much different than your brain responds to just something more equal with shape. So that value of, a round, of, a, of the roll cut can actually go far. All right, so I just got kimchi here. Um, you know, you could obviously um, replace it with, say, um, actually, let me get, I'm going to get a new cutting board so I don't get this one all messed up here. You can replace it with an olives or pepperoncini, but kimchi seems to, I don't know what it is. It, it really lends itself well to, well, I guess it's because of the dramatic flavor. So kimchi, if you've never had it, is cabbage. It's um, often bok choy or napa cabbage. And it has got peppers in it and seasonings that really make it a strong flavor. What else is in kimchi? Fish sauce, I think. Cabbage, radish, red pepper powder, they say. Carrot, green onion, garlic. Oh, interesting. I thought there was a little fish sauce and some kimchi. Salt. And then just mix that baby up. You might add an avocado. If I'm doing the keto thing and I'm looking for a snack, I'll add the avocado. Um, but there's something about, so you've got the crunch of the, um, the cucumber, right? You've got the creaminess and a little bit of crunch within the kimchi. And if you had the um, avocado, you would have, um, again, more creamy. And I could have used more kimchi in here, I think. And then what I like to do is I like to top that with, again, some more variation, some toasted sesame seeds. So some toasted sesame seeds in my yummy. And that gives me fat and gives me a little bit of that nutty variation and just a yummy snack that goes a long way toward filling cravings. And that's what we want of our snack, about 100 calories each. If we can get a little protein in it, that's fantastic. Um, variation causes us to eat more. All right, here's our, what, fourth, fifth snack. Let's, we'll figure it out. We're going to do our, li our gem, little gem lettuce. Now, little gem lettuce has just uh, started to come back into the farmer's market. I didn't make it to the market this weekend, but I did find little gem lettuce. Oh, thank you. Um, I did find little gems in just the uh, grocery store. So it usually comes in, it looks like a cylinder. Um, it's it's uh, like a rolled up towel, little gems. And um, these guys are broken up. They've taken them apart into their you know, they're little separate parts, but these are usually all wrapped up around each other. And then it looks like a, like a head of a small head of lettuce, very intact. And all you need to do is cut off the bottoms and then you can pull these little leaves out. And the leaves are perfect for adding, you know, fill, filling them in with, in with things. Now, if you don't have little gem le lettuce, you can absolutely use um, butter lettuce. Um, you could even use romaine, hearts of romaine. Um, if you can't find it, those are fine too. Now, what am I going to add to this? Oh, before I do that, before we're going to add anything, we're going to make our sauce. So for today's sauce, we're going to make a quick sauce with tahini and um, a product called umeboshi and some, so some soy sauce. 
And tahini is peanut butter made from sesame seeds. So if you have a nut allergy, um, often people with nut allergies don't have seed allergies. And when we're looking to eat more in tune with the planet and our own health and the health of the animals, our goal is to reduce, hopefully, the amount of meat and animal products we eat. And when we do that, if we don't have allergies to nuts and seeds, um, nuts and seeds become that additional not only protein source, but creamy source and fat source. So if there is no nut or seed allergy in your house, definitely consider eating more of our, um, you know, get more uh, nut butters uh, into your diet. And if there is a nut allergy, consider tahini, which is made from sesame seeds. It has a, um, it's not as sweet as a nut would be. So it's a little bit, it's definitely creamy and it's definitely, kind of toasty. You can get it raw or toasted, but it's not, it's a little bit less sweet. So I think it would have more, um, a little bit more on a bitter end, but it's not bitter. It's just not, nuts actually are pretty sweet. Tahini. It's a great um, option for, you know, peanut butter and jelly, except you go tahini and jelly and terrific for any kind of sauce. And let's turn it into that now. Now, I'm going to turn you on. Cooking classes are all about things, learning new things. And this is one of this. I think this is our new product that you probably have never heard of. And it's called umeboshi paste, umeboshi vinegar. Now, I've gone to a number of culinary schools, the Culinary Institute of America, the School of Natural Cookery, and the Vega Macrobiotic Study Center. And at the Macrobiotic Study Center, I learned about umeboshi. This is the paste. It's made from plums. And I call it the the best kept culinary secret because umeboshi is a, is a plum that is the least sweet fruit. And it has a, such a unique flavor. It's, it's like a sweet flavor, but a, it's, it's cured with salt and it's lemony and it's plummy and it's salty. And there's so many uses for umeboshi paste or if you choose, uh, you can buy a vinegar as well. Now, where would you buy a product like this? Um, you would buy it. Why would you buy it? You'd buy it for the flavor. But in macrobiotics, they say that umeboshi is the macrobiotic antibiotic. So we, um, we believe that uh, umeboshi has healing properties, which I don't know if I would uh, there's the science to show that, but it's I definitely I consider it to be one of the power foods in macrobiotics. So beyond its health potential and its amazing flavor, um, it just adds nice color to things should you be looking for a redder color in something. And it um, can be bought in Asian stores, but when you buy it in, say, so Wrench 99, and I'm sure they have it there, uh, it, it will be um, most likely red dye number whatever is going to be added to make that beautiful red color that you see from the umeboshi that I have no idea where it just went. Oh, here it is. Um, but if you buy it from a natural food store, the red color comes from an herb called shiso. And shiso itself, S-H-I-S-O, has a very unique flavor. So between the plum and the shiso, you get a really interesting flavor. Now this is some um, tamari that I have or soy sauce that I'm gonna add into my sauce. And I'm also going to drizzle in a little bit of wasabi paste. So I just added some um, water to some wasabi, little powdered wasabi that I had. And um, I'm gonna add that in. And of course, if you um, don't like wasabi, you don't have to have it. If you don't wanna go through the, um, uh, the adventure of finding umeboshi paste or vinegar at, at natural food stores like Whole Foods, um, you can always just substitute lemon juice. But again, cooking classes are about finding new things. So I'm just adding a little bit of water to get my sauce into something that will drizzle. And if you're looking at this and you're thinking, ooh, that sounds interesting, you might start thinking, well, what else can I use this for? And I would say to you, salad dressing. 
You can make salad dressing with tahini and lemon or tahini and umeboshi or all three. And then add a little salt because it needs it. You could add salt to here we added soy sauce. And uh, you've got a wonderful salad dressing and that's basically what we're going to do with this dish. Now remember that cooking is about tasting. So here, I, I don't wanna put my finger in it, right? Because my finger, heaven only knows what's on my finger. So if I wanna taste it, I can just take off a spoon and yeah, yummy, really good. Might use a little bit more soy sauce, but I'm going to not put that in. Oh, you know what? It could use a little bit more um, wasabi, but let me, I, maybe I'll put that as garnish on top. Um, but when you taste something, make sure that you go through and you think, does it, you look at all the in, in directions and you say, does it have the wasabi? Can I taste the umeboshi? Can I taste the tamari? Don't just taste it and say good or bad. Go through your list of ingredients. All right, I'm gonna go back to my little gems. And what I'm gonna do is add in some, you might add in smoked salmon. I don't like smoked salmon, but what I found are these amazing candied salmons in uh, Whole Foods. So in the fish counter, they're, 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 they're firm. They are not, they're, it's like they're totally dried. And so they don't have that smoked salmon. I just, I've never liked smoked salmon. I, I, I don't know what all you do. All you guys love smoked salmon out there, but I have never been a smoked salmon person. So of course I'm trying to get protein in my snacks and, um, uh, this candied salmon that you could buy at the fish counter in Whole Foods is where you would find it. Substitute um, salmon or uh, smoked salmon if you choose. And then I'm just going to add some pickled ginger to these guys. So now we've got crunch of, you know, the lettuce. We've got kind of a creaminess of the of the fish. We're going to add some more crunch by just some of these seaweed right? Roasted seaweed guys that can go on. Actually, I'll put those on last. Anything else in? Oh, avocado. I've got an avocado. Here's my avocado. I could also add that to some, to my kimchi, but let's add a little bit of avocado. I'm going to get into it just by putting these cuts like this with my knife. They're not going all the way through. And then I can pop those guys out easy. Right, you can decide what you want to put on and in. But then I usually just add a little, well, first off, I want to drizzle on some sauce. All right, you don't need sauce, but, <clears throat> excuse me, a little dabble, do you? And then when we garnish, we like to keep in mind height because our eyes are attracted to height which is often why you see things in restaurants that are piled on top of each other. Because again, what we're doing when we're eating is we're trying to entertain ourselves. And the entertainment comes in the way of our taste buds, but it also comes in the way of our eyes and our ears. Eating is a multi-sensory experience. So height, you know, gives us, not only are we looking at something flat, right? Our eyes are going up and down and looking in different ways. Okay, we've got 15 minutes. Let's do, let's do the miracle. Let's look at our chocolate and see how that's going. Okay, these guys are looking good and ready to eat. They should pop off easy, so that's cool. So we're gonna put those as well. These are our three pleasures, I call them, which would be fruit, nuts, and chocolate. And those guys just firmed up really fun. And I, look at the shapes. Again, think about something round. Think about a ball. Close your eyes. Think about a ball. Now open your eyes and look at this. Interesting, right? Keeps our attention. Something about variation of shape can even be a thing that we are attracted to. All right. And I think all we have left now, oh, frozen water, we'll finish that. We'll finish with that. We're gonna move on to, um, we're gonna finish up our watermelon popsicles. Now, if it was about two hours later, 
I would look at my thing here and it would be much more frozen. And I wanna freeze it a little bit because then what I wanna do next, um, of course it's not there now, but we'll keep on moving on our, um, on our steps. Um, what I wanna do now is add in some, I wanna add in the watermelon seeds. So I might use mini chocolate chips, or if I'm thinking about the whole sugar thing, I might use these Lily's dark chocolate baking chips, no sugar added, and these are fantastic. In fact, forget the, the chocolate chips, start using these. You can buy these in natural food stores. And these actually are coming in mini form, right? So they're sweetened with a product called stevia. Stevia is another alternative sugar. It is a plant that's very sweet. And if you really want nothing at all, try the nibs because the nibs look like watermelon seeds too, don't they? And I would add those in. And then I'm just going to pour into some Dixie cups. Now you may have, um, you may have some kind of a, a um, popsicle type of situation, but at the end product, what we want to do is be able to see the water. These are watermelon pops, right? So we want to fill them up about three quarters of the way. And then I would put these into the freezer for about an hour and they firm up enough for me to be able to stick a popsicle stick inside of them and let them continue to freeze, right? So now it's gonna to fall to the side, but, and then we would let this freeze, you know, overnight or definitely for a few hours. And the directions are there to take you to that step. But lastly, we wanna make the top part, the watermelon rind. And for that, I'm gonna to have to do a little cleaning. So give me one second, I just gotta rinse off my uh, vitamin. Okay, I don't have the cleanest Vitamix here, but it's gonna be fine for us. Um, to it, we're gonna add some spinach, which I actually used all, which was terrible. I don't have any spinach. So what I'm making, I would say a, a half a cup of spinach to a quarter cup of kale. And so I'm just gonna add the kale in here because unfortunately I used up all my spinach. I didn't realize it. I didn't save some when I actually made this. So we'll just put kale in. But of course, these are not only giving us vegetables, right? They're giving us the color of green. And with watermelon, we've got the red. Now we need the green. So we'll put those in. So imagine I just put some spinach and some um, kale into that. And then I'm going to put in a banana. And I'm uh, just going to put in, I put my banana in the freezer to give it a little bit of start to it, a banana. And then I'm gonna put in some pineapple juice. Now you can put in apple juice, but basically whatever juice you put into it, um, you don't want it to have much color because the lighter the color, the more you're going to maintain that green. And it's the green that we're looking for to top our watermelon pops. So let's put that on give it a whirl. Hold on, I'm going to add some more. I'm going to add some more liquid to it. But it looks like we got a good green going. We'll take the overhead shot. I mean, I know I'm pretty, but and get we'll get some noise. All right, so the goal for most um, youthful people would be to not see the flecks of green. So you want it to be able to, um, to um, whirl well. 
Um, you can use a blender for this, a regular blender, but really in order to get it such a great uh, mix, um, the, I, using a, um, using a Vitamix, a high speed blender is your best bet. Now, what I didn't do is save the process of having the frozen um, without the green on top. So I, I put the green on top, all the ones I already made. But let's just imagine that this is frozen and my stick is standing straight. I'll just take it out of the freezer and I will top it with this green mix. And of course we can see here that it actually stayed green at the top, which is nice. And then I would pop both, you know, I would pop this. In. Why don't we do this also? What do we got? We got eight minutes, we got time. So just imagine that that red is frozen. I would top it with green and I would put these both back into the freezer. And then I would let them freeze overnight or at least for a few hours. And then what I get by the miracle of the cooking class is obviously something that looks like this, right? Frozen. And now how do I get this out? Well, if I could move the camera, I could, I guess, but I'm gonna take this and you can hear I'm gonna turn on a little bit of hot water. So you can hear I'm not looking for cold, I want hot. And then all I'm gonna do is just put that cup under hot water until it lets go. Oh, didn't do it. Hold on. So I do have hot water. I'm rotating the, I'm rotating the, oh, there we go. I'm just rotating this guy under the water, right? Just the hot water until it lets go. And then, ta-da, we've got our watermelon pops. So let me get those out of the freezer. And let me get something else out of the freezer, which is really cool. Um, another super easy snack um, to close our list of snacks down, which is frozen cherries and frozen grapes and frozen raisins, which is a snack that I enjoy so much during the summertime because I get that frozen experience, right? But I also get, um, with the, especially with a frozen raisin, which is simple. I just put these, either the grapes, the raisins, in a Tupperware and I put them in the freezer. And um, when you freeze a grape, or excuse me, when you freeze a raisin, you don't, um, because of the sugar in the raisin, it doesn't freeze all the way and it gets chewy. And so that means that I get this experience where I'm um, slowing down my chewing because I froze the, um, I froze what I was eating. And so that's just fun and easy and terrific. All right, so let's have a review now of all these yummy things that we have for your eating enjoyment. I don't know how many snacks we made, you would have to count them. Um, but we made here, starting from the side, we've got strawberries get the blues with our mascarpone cheese and our blueberries and strawberries. Um, we have our um, hummus and apple wrap which is just fun. And what's unique about it, again, is the addition of apple to hummus, which just takes it in a new way. And I encourage you to experiment with that. Um, next to it, then we have our little gem lettuces, uh, which are filled with some delicious smoked salmon. Uh, and, or you, uh, I like the, the smoked salmon from Whole Foods um, and some wasabi. We learned about tahini. Uh, and adding some umeboshi, the macrobiotic antibiotic. And then we have, next to that, um, we have our kimchi and cucumbers with toasted sesame seeds, a, my, my keto um, recipe. We have our extra chocolate nuts and nibs with just little bits of whatever you happen to have around your kitchen. Just melt the chocolate and put it right in. 
Um, our frozen grapes, strawberry, no, excuse, strawberries, they freeze a little too much, but cherries don't freeze all the way. Um, and grapes don't freeze all the way. And, um, uh, raisins really become chewy. So perfect for an easy, so easy, just put them in the freezer, basically put them in a Tupperware. And then last but not least, we'll take the, um, give us the straight shot over so we can see our watermelon. Give us the straight shot. Our watermelon popsicles sweetened with a new way. Use stevia, use monk fruit, and um, you don't have to use any sweetener in your watermelon. And certainly if you have a good source for watermelon, you know, then you don't have to add any source, but sometimes a little, a little uh, salt will, uh, oh, excuse me, actually a little sugar will, add, will make it sweeter. And sometimes add a little salt will make it sweeter. So that is our class. Um, I think I just saw a question pop up, but I couldn't read it. I'm happy to take any questions now if uh, you want to add them to the chat, or you can take off your, um, you know, mute, whatever you would like. Any questions? Should we just start eating? Do you have to take the seeds off the cherries before you freeze them? No, I did. Well, you can. And probably I think I say t t take the, the pits out, but, you know, so I just won't warm my mouth. <laughs> or you can just eat around it. It's not hard. <laughs> Taking the pit out. It's not solid. It doesn't freeze solid. A strawberry freezes solid. A cherry freezes soft but oh it's so refreshing and frozen grapes like uh, for frozen raisins again it slows down your chewing so it really gives you one of the additional things about eating is just the whole process of chewing chewing itself turns us on that's why a lot of us like crispy food because it really gets into it so that's a variation you know try to in when in your cooking snacks or not create um combining crispy with creamy like these guys or most of these guys right variation and the ability to chew is is another addition and another reason why we love to eat and we can play with those attractions that humans have but we can use healthful ways to do it instead of eating all these fried foods and you know, the greasy eh, and, you know, too much sugar. And so take the ideas that food science has figured out to give us these snacks that are basically doing us no good and take those same ideas and bring them into your snacking habit. Um, any other questions? Well, I really want to thank you all for coming to class today. I especially like uh, seeing the young people in. You know, it's interesting. Most people have never taken a cooking class before. Very few people have actually about a quarter of the classes I usually teach have taken a class. And again, cooking and eating is all about tips. The more you know, the faster, more creative, more delicious your food and cooking will be. So thank you for taking the time to learn a few snacks with us. and. Um, Let's change the world with great tasting food. Together, we can make a great meal and a great difference. Thanks so much. Thank you, Chef Laura. And thank you, everyone, for coming today. Have a great afternoon. Bye. Thank you.